Greetings friends. Welcome to Two Days Denarius. I'm Ron Thomas. Actually, I'm just taking a walk today. It's going to be kind of a devotional walk that uh, we can do together. I'm actually uh, on the island of Coronado right now. And Coronado's right next to San Diego. Uh, it's not an island so much, but uh, if it wasn't for the Silver Strand, it would be an island. But Coronado, uh, it's got a lot of history there. The Hotel Del Coronado. There's one other hotel there that's among the most and bestest uh, in the nation. And I've never stayed in the Hotel Del Coronado. I couldn't afford it. <laughs> Maybe you can't either. But just to take a look behind me. Right behind me there is the Coronado Bridge. Built in... Actually, it was ready to go in 1972, so it's been around a while. It's about a two mile long bridge. When I was working at the North Island Naval Base, I uh, crossed that bridge every day. Special crossing it because both directions, you just have amazing views. So when you go from, uh, I guess, east to west, yeah, that would be the direction. You get to look out at the ocean. You're on top of that and you get to see the, the beautiful ocean. But when you head home and you start heading eastward, you get to look out and see the mountains. I have to tell you, this winter they were outstanding. The, with all the snow on the mountains, you can see that picture there uh, that I have. That picture was taken from Balboa Park, which is a very famous tourism attraction uh, in San Diego. But uh, that picture was taken 60 miles away at least from where that snow-capped mountains were. So uh, just beautiful. Hey, did you? <laughs> I don't know what that biker did. I hope it wasn't too mean or I'll have to redo this. Uh, I don't know. A lot of people bike at this park. Uh, it's a very popular place. Kind of nice to come on the weekday uh, because it's not. I came on a weekend once. Ball games were going. It was just crazy. But today I got a nice little walk. Want to look at Psalm 90 today. But... Back to Coronado, I took a picture in the picture that you uh, saw. That snow, I'd never seen so much snow uh, on mountains out here. The winter was, was really a rough one in many ways. Lots of series of storms, had like 12 uh, winter storms here. Usually we get at most three of those types of storms with heavy rains and stuff in the winter here, but this was unique really was. Uh, the weeds in my backyard have just about conquered me, but I think I'm winning the battle now. Uh, but there is a beautiful view, view behind me too. We're going to head that way. Uh, you can see the city. There it is. You can see the city there, uh, downtown San Diego. This would be my fourth vlog, but I, I wanted to make this a devotional one today. and. You know, I have to be honest, I was hit hard by the loss of uh, Charles Stanley. And that's been taking some time. You know, I know Charles Stanley's in heaven and stuff, you know, but when a man, a God of that nature moves on, and if you're a minister and you were blessed and, you know, as I said in one of my other videos, he's part of the reason why I'm in the ministry. Just one thing that happened, and when I was going through a troublesome time in the 1990s, one of the things that helped me overcome it was Charles Stanley, watching him on Saturdays. So, that just meant a lot to me, but, you know, when you lose such a tremendous man of God, and, you know, since then, the only other, uh, the only other man of God who I cried about uh, when we lost him was R.C. Sproul back in 2006. 17. R.C. Sproul, in my mind still, is our last great theologian. We don't have anybody like R.C. Sproul. I don't know if we'll ever get anybody like him again. But having said that, I want to move over to Psalm 90. Uh, we're just going down the walkway here. Again, let me see if I can get a nice view here. By This is, this is a San Diego Bay. There's the Coronado Bridge, a better look at that for you. I have my screen open to the right. You see my eyes turn. That's what they're doing. Look at that screen. Make sure you can see the picture. And I got to trade arms. 
carrying this camera and this tripod can get a little tired, <laughs> tiring. But I'll pop my phone out of my pocket because I want to look at Psalm 90. Psalm 90 is a beautiful psalm. And I'll talk about the title here. You know, when Pastor David Jeremiah, Dr. David Jeremiah, uh, spoke at the legacy celebration for Charles Stanley's life, he's talked to him about him as a man of God. Same thing that was in my tribute video to Charles Stanley. It said, Charles Stanley, man of God, 1932 to 2023. You know, what a title. And when you look at Psalm 90, I can't, I don't know of any other writer in Psalms or even elsewhere in, script, in uh, Scripture where a descriptor like that's given uh, to an individual writing a psalm or any other book. But that particular one opens up a prayer of Moses, the man of God. <laughs> Who's going to argue that Moses was not a man of God? <laughs> it would be nuts. <laughs> Moses, the man of God. And, you know, you picture the stature uh, that Moses had. I'm giving this picture to you, the city of San Diego behind me. We're kind of getting closer. But you can see the beauty of this bay. Moses, the man of God, the, people, the one who led the children of Israel. Not totally into the promised land, got him outside of it. People drove him crazy enough that he sinned, he and Aaron at one point. And the Lord said, you're not going to see the land. Well, guess what? Moses never stopped being a man of God. Yeah, Moses made a couple of mistakes along the way. But... He was still a man of God. Charles Stanley, would he do some things differently? Maybe. But he was still a man of God. You know, that's the beauty of life, the Christian life. You know, Jesus died for the sins of Christians too. And, you know, even though Charles Stanley himself went through a divorce, uh, certainly the reconciliation that people hope for didn't happen. But he still functioned uh, as a man of God, certainly with his church's approval and stuff. We don't know all the circumstances behind that. But I don't think there's anybody in the right mind who's going to say that Charles Stanley wasn't a man of God. Let's take around. This picture's getting here. It's getting better all the time. So there it is, another look. I don't see any pelicans out here today. Might try to get some pictures of that for you, but... I just wanted to walk around and talk this a little bit about a devotional for a few moments and for once in my life maybe make a shorter video. I don't know. I think that's impossible. I'll get my beautiful iPhone 13 out here, 13 Pro that is. Let's go ahead and look and talk about Psalm 90. Actually, in honesty, Psalm 90 is just one of my favorite psalms. I look forward to getting there every year. But having said that, I do want to say... Uh, I was reading Psalm 36 today. I used the Robert Murray, Murray Machine Bible reading plan, and I get through the Psalms twice a year, but the reading today had Psalm 36. And I'm going to go ahead and get to Psalm 36 first, because I want to read that title to you. And it kind of touches basically on what we just said about Moses. Now, Moses was titled the man of God. But you're going to see a title of associated to David here uh, in Psalm 36. Goodness, where is my Bible app? There it is. I use what's a program that's called Logos, and I got my study Bibles in there. It's a remarkable program, so be patient with me for a second. Let me go ahead and pull this up. I should have worn my glasses on this trip. All right, stop. Here, while I do this, you get another nice look at the city of San Diego, America's finest city. Well, at least that's our slogan here. All right, 90. Nope, we want 36. To the choir master of David, the servant of the Lord. For those of you who might be pastors or ministers or serving in the church out there, 
want to say something to you. This is a title you should covet. To be known as a servant of the Lord. Such a blessing. Man of God, servant of God. You know, we know who those people are. We know who pillars are in the church. And you know, when we lose them, when they go on to be with the Lord in heaven, you know, we do feel it in our hearts. I, I have no doubt that Charles Stanley is with the Lord. But is it okay for us on earth to miss men of God? Absolutely. You know, when Stephen was martyred in Acts chapter 7, it said some devout men buried Stephen in the book of Acts. You read it for yourself. I think it's the beginning of chapter 8. It said devout men took Stephen up and buried him. And I love the King James translation. It says it made loud lamentation over him. Loud. Hey, that's the thing, my friends. We can lament for people as Christians when they pass and go to heaven. All right, so let me get back to Psalms. We're going to go into Psalm 90 now. Psalm 90 is just a beautiful psalm. I look forward, like I said, every year when I get close and it's time to read Psalm 90, it's just awesome. English Standard Version. A prayer of Moses, the man of God. Lord, you have been our dwelling place in all generations. Before the mountains were brought forth, or ever you had formed the earth and the world from everlasting to everlasting, you are God. You know, that's adoration right there. This is a prayer. Remember I, the Acts formula? We start with adoration. Like Lord, our Father who art, who art in heaven, holy is your name. Okay, let's get it right. Let's get it right, right from the start. But you see that right from the beginning. You have been our dwelling place, which also means a refuge. You know, sometimes we need that. And God is our refuge. Just like, think about Psalm, uh, Psalm 46. God is our refuge and strength, a very present help in time of need. And then it says, from everlasting to everlasting, you are God. God, the beauty of God, is his, he's his own essence. He's his own being. He's in control of all things. God has a much different perspective than we do. And that's why we trust him, because he knows all things, and he knows what's good for us, and he takes care of us. He says, well, you see the beginning, you see the praise there, but then he's going to get into talking about the difficulties of our humanness here, the things that hit us and strike us in life. You return man to dust and say, return, or old children to man. You know, God has our name and he has our time, our length of existence. It's in his will, it's in his plan, and it's not going to be one minute more or one minute less than what God planned for you and me. For a thousand years in your sight are as but as yesterday when it is past, or as a watch of the night, a guard of the night. That's something. Time. God has a much different respect, perspective on time than we do. Peter wrote that about that once too, and he said, a, uh, a day to the Lord is as a thousand years to us. Yeah, consider that, friends. That's important. Now, <laughs> this kind of gets a little serious. If you take yourself too seriously, maybe this will take care of that. You sweep them away as with a flood. They are like a dream. Like grass that is renewed in the morning, in the evening, it fades and withers. Think of a quick growing plant, you see it grow one day, and it's gone the next. Guys, that's our lives. Our lives are, are like that. They're short. We have a perspective on time, and this gets more important for us as we go along here. For we are, bought, we are brought to an end in your anger. Well, what does that mean? Well, it's talking about we're sinful creatures. Yes. You know, even Christians do sin. Why does you think in uh, 1 John 1, 9, it says, if we confess our sins, he is faithful and righteous to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. 
Christians because we do sin. So keep that in mind. Our secret sins in the light of your presence. Yeah, we do have a sin problem. And over in Hebrews it says, uh, all of the things that we do and everything are naked and exposed before the one with whom we have to do. God, Christian, is watching over you. And if you're lost, you need Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. Because without that, the wrath of God remains on you. John 3, 36. If you don't believe in the Son, the wrath of God remains on you, even while you are alive. Consider that. You need Jesus. you got to come to Christ and accept him as Lord and Savior. It says that God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believes in him will not perish, but have everlasting life. we got a halo problem here. See if I can get those for you. There you go. See in the background? Those come from Naval Air Station North Island. Those are M60 helicopters. So, all right. Let us continue. For all our days pass away under your wrath. Yes, that's the curse. Adam and Eve sinned in the garden. And when they did that, that was the curse for us that, that we were going to suffer physical death. And if we don't receive Christ, it will be spiritual death too. The years of our, our lives are 70. And even by reason of strength, 80. Yet their span is by toil and trouble and they are soon gone away. Friends, we do face trials in life. And yes, this passage is telling us to understand the longevity of life in the sense of shortness, to think about what we're doing. Who considers the power of your anger and your wrath according to the fear of you? We turn, O oh Lord, how long? Have pity on your servants. Satisfy us in the morning with your steadfast love. You know, <laughs> hey, when you see things that are hopeless and you know, you look at this now, you say, well, goodness, this is dark. Well, that may be true. But when there's darkness, friends, that's the beauty of the psalm, the light is coming, and now we're getting to that point. Satisfy in the mor us in the morning with your steadfast love, that me we may rejoice and be glad all our days. You know, I'm telling you, friends, the only way you're gonna do that is to have a relationship with Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. Make us glad for as many days as you have afflicted us. Don't think that the Lord isn't with you when your trials come. There isn't a believer. Paul said that we were going to suffer persecution. Peter said that. Jesus said that. In the world you're going to have tribulation, but do not fear. I have overcome the world. John 16, 33. It's one of my favorite verses in the whole Bible. Anybody who says otherwise is a false teacher. Let your work be shown to your servants and your glorious power to their children. Let the favor of the Lord our God be upon us and establish the work of our hands upon us. Yes, establish the work of our hands. And you know what, I missed something important here. Here we go. Who do you work for? Who's your boss, friend? Who's your boss? Moses also wrote to teach us to number our days so that we may get, or we may have a heart of wisdom. Teach us to number our days. What are you doing to make the most of your time? Are you glorifying God with your time in your life? You know, this is beautiful because think about this. Over in uh, Ephesians, it says that we ought to redeem the time or buy back the time. Make the most of our time because the days are evil. You following God's calling in your life? If you are saved and you know Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, think about this. We stand before God one day in judgment. What's it going to look like for you? You know, my arm's getting real tired. I'm going to have to find a way, a place to go set this down. Um, you, you better consider. Teach us to number our days. If our days be 70, or if our days be 80, if we're lengthened by the goodness of God, time is precious, friend. We don't have a thousand years as one day as God does. Our days, our length of time, and as I get older, the time goes quickly, and yeah, moves fast, and you, you begin to see 
that longevity in life means something. You really do. Um, but let's redeem the time. Let's buy back the time. Let's make the most of our opportunities in service to our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. This is just a beautiful psalm, and I want to encourage you. you know, if you want God's work established in your life, and you and I do, probably a good idea to pay attention here uh, to what Moses says. So I want to go ahead and close this out with a prayer, prayer of devotion. You know what, I can do more of these because the beauty of living in Southern California is there are many places to go to do wonderful devotions like this. But Lord, I want to pray for each one who ever watched this video. Lord, that they would want to be somebody who is in your service. Somebody who wants to know. First of all, I want to pray if they don't know you, that they want to come to Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior. Lord, all they have to do is just acknowledge their sin. They know that the wages of sin is death, but the free gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. And all they need to do, they confess with their mouth Jesus is Lord and believe in their heart that God has raised him from the dead. They will be saved. Lord, let people come to Christ. That's what this channel exists for. And Lord, as you call me to put this channel together, see people saved and hear about that. Time goes on. Uh, Lord, that would be such a glorious thing. And Lord, for Christians, help them take this to heart. Help them take things seriously of you so they might grow and walk with Jesus in this time and the time that you have gifted them with. Time is a gift, it's a precious gift. And help us, Lord, to handle it and live that way in the days of our short longevity, as this Psalm says, to make the most of our time. Thank you for the blessing, Lord. Let us this particular devotion touch the hearts of those who watch. For I pray this in Jesus' name, amen. I truly always appreciate those who watch my videos, subscribe to the videos. Understand this ministry is devoted to the spiritual growth of Christians. It's also there to reach the lost with the good news of salvation in Jesus Christ. So I wanna to say to you, you know, I don't make money off this channel, that's not my goal. I do believe in the inerrancy, infallibility and authority of scripture as our only rule of faith and practice. Uh, I do believe in the true evangelical faith, and those basically written uh, in the London Baptist Confession of 1689, I'm 100% with. You know, we need to get back in studying doctrine and learning what our theology is, because too many places, uh, it's not happening. So, I, yes, I'm a true Bible believer, and my channel exists for the purpose of filling a void, because people are not hearing the Word of God in their churches. They're jumping up and down, dancing their churches too much and calling a worship, and that's not so. People, we need to love hearing the Word of God again. So I encourage you to read your Bibles. I really encourage you to take a look, take time, meditate, and reflect on the beauty of Psalms at times. You know, Psalms, in many ways, not just a spiritual book, but it's a very human book as well, as you heard from uh, talking about Psalm 90 today talking about a man of God who had many, Moses had many struggles, goodness, uh, in the time that he was taking care of the children of Israel. So David as well, David the servant of the Lord, Moses the man of God. I could go down a list of people who were men of God throughout history who had their, their struggles. The Puritans, uh, the Puritans had to fight battles, many for the life. Martin Luther, uh, the early church, uh, many of them there, I think of Polycarp, who was a martyr. Um, you know, I think in the modern times, Charles Stanley, when he was here, he fought the battles. He fought the battle, basically, in the war in his church when he became pastor in First Baptist uh, of Atlanta. And uh, then he also fought the war in the Southern Baptist Convention in the 1980s when liberalism was trying to take it over. And it was bad in those days. And it's bad now. We're right there now. But we had men of God back then, like Charles and like... Adrian Rogers, Paige Patterson, among others. I don't think they're around now, but we're gonna find out here in June. So pray for the Southern Baptist Convention. I'm very serious. If that, if that denomination falls, the apostasy in this country is only going to get worse. Well, on the other hand, Jesus is coming soon. You know, what well, the last sign, the last sign 
before Jesus returns. The, the apostasy must come first, and then comes the man of lawlessness. Folks, we're seeing the apostasy happen right before our eyes. And this will be why maybe the last chip that falls. Just keep your eyes on the skies. Our Lord and Savior is coming too. But in the meantime, be about his business. There are lost people who need to be saved. There are missionaries to be prayed for. And if you're a Christian, you have a calling that God is giving you. Get in it. Hey, if you want to do something for free mission work, like, subscribe, share my channel. Uh, those things help. Watch it for at least 20 minutes. Those things help the YouTube algorithm spread it out to more people. And, you know, this channel is about teaching the Bible and spiritual growth to people, warning people when they need to be warned. So, yep, yeah, I'm an old classic. I actually grew up in fundamentalism. Um, so, believe me, I'm a Bible believer. Those fundamentalists taught me how to love the Word of God. So, all right, well, I am going to sign off at this point. And just like I said, like, take a look at the beauty of San Diego behind you right here down by the bay. It is pretty gorgeous. So, hey, thank you for watching. And may God richly bless you. Uh, I'll be right, I'll be doing, creating more videos soon. And you know, I like this. I would, Lord willing, create more devotionals. And go climb a couple of mountains out here too. And, and do devotional there as well. God bless you, friends. Thank you for watching.